What up, y'all? It's your boy, Martin, a.k.a. The Boxing Purist. Welcome once again to the Truth and Absolute channel, where I speak the truth and nothing but the truth. So, homie, good God almighty. All right, y'all, it's morning time. It's chilly. I hope you guys had an amazing, super blessed and merry Christmas with you, your family, your friends, and those around you. Anyway, we had a huge weekend of boxing. We had a huge, huge card of boxing. Maybe one upset to me, and y'all know who I'm talking about, and I'll be real with you. I had that one wrong. Listen, I'm talking about Deontay Wilder, of course. This is the thing with Deontay Wilder. I've never been a fan of of Deontay Wilder. Like me personally say, I'm a fan. I watch all the man's fights because I'm a boxing fan. So I try not to miss a fight, but I'm not a fan of Deontay Wilder. I give him all the props in the world for having that one shot of quitter. Boom, 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 knocking everyone out. But we all know that Deontay Wilder has never been more than firepower in his left and his right hand that it was his whole game inside of that squared circle. His whole game was his power. But what happens when that fire is no longer there? Well, you saw it against Joseph Parker this last, uh, this past weekend. I was expecting Deontay Wilder to be in a fight with Joseph Parker where it went a few rounds and Deontay landed that bomb. He landed that bomb, stopped the fight. And the reason is, is because although Deontay Wilder is not a skilled fighter, he won't break you down. He won't open you up. He just, he throws that shot hoping to land it. It takes a special type of fighter to stay away from a shot like that. That's why you saw so many people going down against Deontay. And then all of a sudden he fight Tyson Fury and Tyson Fury was okay in that ring with him because he has the character, the persona, the personality to not be scared of the punch the whole time, rather stay away from the punch knowing that that's his bread and butter. Not everyone has them to it, like Tyson Fury did. So I thought he was gonna do the same to Joseph Parker, knock him out. Well, guess what? Joseph Parker fought a good, hard fight, and he got the W. AJ won, Daniel Dubois beat Gerald Big Baby Miller. So it didn't play out how everyone was expecting because out of this whole expensive card, at the top, we wanted it to be Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder coming out victorious to set up a super mega huge fight. That did not go as planned because I don't know about y'all. After seeing that Deontay Wilder does not have that firepower he once had, that would be his only shot against Joshua, a puncher's chance. But if that's not even there and he just got beat by Joseph Parker, it had to have heard the stock of a possible Wilder-Joshua fight, right? It had to have. I mean, there's more interesting fights to make now. Don't get me wrong. I would still watch it. A lot of y'all would still watch it, but it does not have the same sound as if they would have both won their fights convincingly, right? In other boxing news, this one was interesting. So we know after Devin Haney fights now, for whatever reason, Devin Haney after... Let me tell y'all something about Devin Haney. Inside that ring, Devin Haney is nice, the kid is nice inside that ring. His resume, I hate to say it because I'm not a fan of Devin. He has a very, very good, decent resume. The only problem is Devin Haney could fight this landscaper over here. And Sunday morning, he's going to be doing an interview trying to sound like Floyd Money Mayweather. That's my thing with Devin Haney. After every little thing that he do, he sits up at the podium like he's Floyd Mayweather, just accomplished everything. And it's like, bro, you're still running. You're still, you're not even in that category yet. You're still running, trying to jump into a category. That's my thing with Devin. Anyway, so they showed, I saw a posting of a wish list that Devin Haney hosts for 2024. Y'all not gonna be ready for this one. I thought it was funny. You guys will see when it's getting funny. He said Ryan Garcia, which it looks like they're already in talks for a fight. Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. It looks like they're already trying to get it together. It seems like both camps are coming together and are negotiating. Okay, Ryan is one of them. He said another possible fight is Teofimo Lopez. Okay, I don't believe him, but whatever. Let's run with it. He said another fight is obviously Tank Davis. Okay, we'll see what's up with that. And then... According to the thing I saw, he would like a fight against Terrence Bud Crawford at 147 pounds. Now, you talk about biting off a little bit more than you could chew. Could you imagine 
Devin Haney inside the ring with Terrence Bud Crawford. 147 pounds. Deadlifts 405. Dude is small, but as strong as could be. You know, Devin came into his last fight at 165. I don't know what he's trying to bank on. You could call out these other guys, but to call out Terrence Crawford... <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. Don't go that far, Devin. Keep riding your career. Don't come into a major roadblock that you will not come back from. Ask Errol Spence Jr. Anyway, y'all, drop a comment down below. Let me know what y'all think of a possible Wilder uh, Anthony Joshua fight, what you guys thought of the fights this last weekend, and what you guys think of Devin Haney possibly saying or saying that ideally he would want to fight with Terrence Crawford at 147 pounds. Drop a comment down below. Hit that like button or that dislike button. It's all love. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. Talk to y'all soon. Much love. God bless y'all. Peace.